Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this rather massive unboxing video. And the subject for today will be Tamiya's 135th scale Dragon Wagon US 40 ton tank transporter kit. So this is one of the larger, if not largest, kits supplied by Tamiya in their 135th scale range with the exception of their 18 ton FEMO and tank transporter set, which both came out I think more or less in the same uh, around the same time. So this kit was released back in 1998, so she's almost 20 years old, however it does hold up quite well and even with a little bit of extra work you can get a very nice end result, however even out of the box this kit's very nice. So speaking of the box, the box is absolutely massive, so here's my hand in relation to it, it's quite a large box and a very large kit. The overall length of this kit is 551mm, so just over half a metre, including both the tractor and trailer as well as being about 41 millimeters wide. So it is a pretty large kit. However, it is jam packed for the details and it has stood up to the test of time very well. So first things first, we have a look at the box. So you get our standard style Tamiya box art, very attractive with the line drawings of a Sherman. So obviously a Sherman doesn't come in this kit, just the tractor and trailer. We get um, some hand down or top down drawings of the vehicle, so you can see it's pretty massive, as well as a line drawing again of the side of the vehicle with a Panther G on the back, which is based on a very famous photograph of a captured Panther G being recovered by one of these machines. So cracking open the box, we are confronted with a mass of plastic. So we have our instruction manual as well as many bagged sprues of olive drab plastic as well as a large container of parts and a separate partition for the armoured cap. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox and unbag all these parts and let's go through these in detail and see what we get in the kit. So looking at the instructions, so this is truly a book, as you can see by its thickness, there's no booklet about this whatsoever. So we have a built up photograph of the actual model, with a few explanations of some of the parts. So, let's have a look. So ov overall we get an extensive history of the vehicle in several languages. So it being a Tamiya style instruction sheet, it's not going to be any way misleading. It's very, very concise with a lot of explanations in written text in several languages to help us better understand what we're working with. So step one, we have the inside of the cabin and the engine. There's no internal engine details. However, you're not going to see any of this with the exception of the cooling system. However, it's still a nice little addition nonetheless because you can actually expose the fence on the front of the armoured cab to show this detail. On step number two we have some more details for the bottom of the chassis as well as the winch assemblies. As you can see these are not too busy, quite easy to follow. Moving on on step three with more details for the running gear and suspension as well as the tandem drive chains for the drivetrain for this vehicle. It's a very simple machine. They, they designed it to be as simple as possible to keep it easy to maintain in the field. Step 7 and 8, we're still maintaining, or should I say we're still installing quite a few elements to the running gear. It's a cool note, the, the axles can turn, so you can model the wheels in different angles, which is always a nice detail. It can add a lot of visual interest to a model. Step 9, we're going on to the tyres, and there are a lot of tyres in this kit, just like 16 uh, or so tyres. The tractor alone, as you can see, uh, has no fewer than 6 tyres <laughs> in 2 doubled up banks and 2 singles. Step 11, we're moving into the interior details, which we do get a pretty nicely detailed inner cab. Again, a lot of this is going to be obscured by the armoured cab itself, but still, through the open hatches and doors, you can see quite a bit of this. Step 12, we have a very basic crewman set. I won't be using these, so I have a, a different idea for my 
Dragon Wagon have a, an interesting diorama in mind. More on that in a different video. However, it's still nice that they're there. 13, we're moving on to some of the internal fittings of the armoured cab, such as fiery steamishers, crew weapons, and um, decontaminator uh, water mounts, and what have you. Moving on to step 14, we're moving into the finishing touches of the armoured cab and attaching the rear plate as well as some of the crew weapons and a few other small details. There's also a small fret of photo etch also included in this kit, which is mostly the non-slip textures for the trailer. Step 16, we're on to adding some of the armoured panels and roof mounts for the armoured cab. They're on to step 17, moving on to some of the more um, simple assemblies such as the drawbars and the siren and headlights for the cab. So you can see they're not overly busy steps, which for a build as big and complex as this is very important. And it's one thing Tamiya does excel at is creating very concise instructions, which is very important. Step 18, the ammunition ring, or should I say the weapon ring for the M2 50 caliber machine gun. Then we're moving on to some of the details for the rear of the tractor, such as the coupler, uh, the exhaust, which you can, it comes with a photo etched shroud. You can probably do some very nice rust effects on that. As well as the A-frame, which is designed for towing vehicles without the trailer. Step 20, we're mounting all these sub-assemblies onto the tractor. And then we're moving on to step 21, which is the winch assemblies, which comes with some a string to do the various tow cables. You might want to source some steel tow cable if you wish. I think the string might work okay for this though. Step 22, now we're actually assembling some of the bigger winch assemblies, which is a tandem winch. It's a very complex assembly, but should uh, look quite good on the vehicle once done up. 23, we're assembling the mount bracket for the, the tandem winches as well as on step 24, the various controls. On step 25, we're moving on to controls for the A-frame, which are modeled in, uh, I think it's like a final tubing type thing, as well with some steel bars, if I remember correctly. We'll have a look at those in a few moments. Then 26, some smaller details, such as the crane arm, uh, a few spotlights and a few final drives by the looks of it, or the chain hoist actually. 27, so it's already on, <laughs> we're already pushing into 27 steps already. So step 27, we're mounting the chain hoist to the back of the vehicle, which is workable. Um, you can model this um, to a certain degree with a small element of workability. 28, we're mounting the tires to the vehicle, as well as some of the smaller details such as rear fuel mirrors, the .5 or the 50 caliber machine gun, as well as some of the chains and draw hitches for towing. And then on to step 29, we're, we're moving on to the trailer now. And as you will see in a few minutes, this trailer is quite massive. So the trailer assembly has both steel and screws to reinforce it, which is very good. On to step 30, we're mounting the upper part of the upper panel to the trailer, as well as some of the hitches and couplers. Moving on to step 31, we're doing some of the photo wedge um, diamond pattern non-slip surfaces onto the steps on the back of the trailer, as well as some of the uh, support leg details. Step 30, we're doing the axles for the trailers, and 34, we're continuing with the axle detail. So it's quite intense, this this kit. Um, it's not as over-engineered as say a Dragon kit would be or a Ming. So this should be very buildable if you take your time, however. So it's, it's gonna be a very enjoyable build nonetheless. Step 35, we're adding the wheels to the back of the trailer, as well as some of the, the winch assemblies and the rear ramps. Step 36, Again, more trailer details and the winches for the trailer. It's 37, we're, on about, we're looking at the guards or the wheel guards and skids for the, the back of the trailer, which is designed to, to prevent the trailer from being damaged 
when they're pulling a tank up onto the back of the trailer. And then we're mounting those in step 38. Step 39 is telling us to do the coupling, the pneumatic or hydraulic couplings for the brakes for the trailer, which is done in final piping. So obviously if you're painting these separately, you'll probably do this step at the very end. And then we get this very, very helpful and informative uh, two-page spread here. Haha, <laughs> not like that, gentlemen. So what this is showing us is how vehicles were recovered and lowered off these trailers, giving us a very detailed step-by-step -step guide. So we know how to do the wiring or the, the, the wire work to have a tank being pulled up to it. And I intend to have a knocked out Sherman being pulled up onto the back of my trailer. So it's uh, very helpful that they did this. It just makes life a little bit easier on us, the modeler. And with that, we're on to the marking guides. And we get a few marking guides. We get 12th Armour Division, 13th Armour Maintenance Company, um, from France, 1944. We get 8 Army Ordnance Maintenance Company from Germany, November of 1944. We get another vehicle from Holland, 1945. Independent 470 or 457 Ordnance Evacuation Company from April of 1945, not vehicles from France. We also get a Japanese Ground Self-Defense Forces vehicle, which is kind of cool and different. It's a little bit more basic, it's not as interesting as the other vehicles. And then on the last two pages, we get a, sprue, a very detailed sprue map. And then we also have um, the Tamiya parts. Um, if you break a part, basically they can give you new parts. That doesn't really work for anyone other than in Japan, I believe, so that's kind of useless to us as Westerners. However, it's still cool out there. And there we have the instruction book. So moving on to the decal sheet. So we get quite a, uh, a busy sheet of decals for this vehicle. Quite a, bit, quite a few markings. It's going to be quite interesting to see how a 20 or 19 year old Tamiya decal sheet holds up. So this was in its own bag, so the air or moisture in the model shop should not have really affected it in any way. And I'll be putting this into a Ziploc bag just to keep the dampness away from it. So we get quite a few Allied stars in various sizes. We get a very handy um, star that's basically being cut. And that goes onto the front of the vehicle where uh, the armoured hatches for the, for the driver's windows are. So we don't have to cut that ourselves. We get a very nice like, pin-up kind of uh, style um, painting for the vehicle. I quite like that. I think I'm going to use those. I really like 1940s pin-up, you know. They're a little bit classy and also it's just a bit different. It gives a, a car or a vehicle or an aircraft a little bit of um, a little bit of character. We also get loads of placards, various different um, first aid placards, um, uh, fire stream assures, that type of thing. We don't have any decals for the instrument panel, however that's not really an issue because you're not going to see that anyway. So either way it's pretty good and we'll be very interested to see how these decals behave once we come to build this machine. So moving on to the first box of parts. So we get this large cardboard box. We get a line drawing of the plan or, or top-down view of the tractor and trailer few advertisements on the side and then just the same kind of features of the kit. So I've already cut the tape so we can get into this box. And we are confronted with a massive amount of tires, so many tires. We also have our 50 cal machine gun, some chrome searchlight facings that we can basically put inside the searchlights and then a clear piece of plastic over them. We have a photo etch fret um, with a, a few small details and the non-skid textures as well as a simple clear sprue with the two windshields and spotlight lenses. And there's also a bag that I think I've dropped and also included is this bag of 
various miscellaneous detail parts. So this is included in this box as well. I just uh, took it out and forgot that I'd taken it out. So we get some copper chain for the ramps and the various other winches, as well as some rubber hosing, which will be for the pneumatic or hydraulic piping, as well as a, quite a few poly caps for the tires, two large stainless steel metal support ribs for the trailer to stop it from bowing. We also get some various different metal and rubber piping for the A-frame um, pistons, as well as some copper wire and some string. So quite a bit um, of parts in this. I'm not going to open this up because I don't want to lose anything, but there's quite a bit going on in that bag. And that lives in here. On another note, with the like I showed very briefly, the 50 cal is pretty much the exact same as they have in every Tamiya kit. I'm going to be replacing this with an Asuka Models one. Uh, it's far better detail in my opinion. This is kind of um, beginning to show its age. But other than that, everything else is quite nice. We also get a second partition, which is going to host, or should I say, it's going to hold the cab, which is a one-piece styrene cast, which was very impressive for its time. So I'm just going to remove this little box. We just get a simple line drawing of the Dragon Wagon and its trailer. Again, the exact same advertising of the various features of the kit. So this is a very impressive piece of plastic. As you can see, it is almost the size of my hand. And again, it is cast in one piece, which was very impressive for its time. You know, this is well before slide molding technology really took off. So this was made in, yes, 98, Tamiya. So we have a small little copyright mark here, which is not a problem because the, in the interior, so as you can see, the interior is blank. However, this is going to build up like an aircraft cockpit where you'll have panels that you will glue in to give it its basic interior. So all that's going to be covered. There is no warping whatsoever on this kit. And I think that's mostly down to the fact that they've placed some very clever molding tabs here or um, sprue runners, which will give it an extra bit of support and strength to stop it from uh, bending or contorting over time. And bear in mind, this is probably sat in that model shop since about 98 or 2000, so it's held up very well. You will note, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, there are quite small lines running down the plastic. So what these are, these are known as cooling lines. So this is um, basically when the plastic was kicked out of the mould, it was still cooling, and that's just um, some marks from the cooling process of the plastic. However, the plastic is fine, and once you paint it, you can't see it. So don't be worried about that. It will have no effect over the model and the end quality. We also have some very nice rivet detail and tie down detail on the top here. It's a very simple um, feature, but it's very striking. It's one of the reasons why I really like the Dragon Wagon. It's just the lovely angular surfaces of its armored cab. So moving on to the trailer, which comes in two parts. And this is a very, very impressive piece of plastic molding technology. So bear in mind, we must consider the, the age of this kit and when it was built. So this was is very impressive for its time and still is even today. So it comes in two parts. So I'm just going to remove the top end and we'll have a look at each piece individually. So this is the floor of our, um, I think it's the M35 trailer, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong there. Can't quite remember. So we have basically no detail on the bottom, which is fine, you're not going to see any of this. We have the counter-tapped or counter-synced screw um, ports, so the top parts will actually screw together for extra strength, which is handy. We'll also have two metal ribs that will go into this part of the trailer to stop it from bowing and flexing over time. And once again, there is absolutely no bowing on this piece of plastic, which again is massively impressive because this is a massive piece of plastic. It's huge. That's what she said. So this is very, um, this is very impressive. And once again, by adding these sprue runners along the edges here of this trailer bed, it, be, it adds strength and stops it from bending and flexing. 
Again, we have some cooling marks, but not a problem and nothing to worry about. We do have some nice detail on the hinges for the rear access ramps where the tank would drive up onto. But again, it's not um, it's not crazy detail, no cast, uh, cast texture, but this would all be sheet metal and steel, so I don't think there'd be much of a cast or much of a texture at all on this. Unless it's you want to add like the rolled steel effect, but be honest with you, it's not necessarily necessary. Or it's not necessary necessary? It's not really necessary. <laughs> I'm in awe of this kit, it's absolutely amazing. I'm getting a bit excited. And then we'll move on to the top piece. And now this is some thin, thin plastic. And once again, we have absolutely no warping or any type of flash or bowing, which is very impressive again, because as you can see, this is a very, very thin piece of plastic. Now we do have some tabs such as here and here as well as down here and these are the punches from the kit uh, from the mold when the, the pins would come forward from the mold and push the piece out so we're going to have to remove these so they're going to be sanded down however a quick pass with a hobby um, sanding stick will be more than enough to fix it we do have some nice details like um, small hydraulic i think these are hydro hydraulic point, uh, piping mounts but again, it's a very simple piece of of detail. Again, the the dragon wagon as a whole was a very simple vehicle, and it was more just designed to be practical rather than over engineered. Either way, it's still very impressive, and you can actually get an idea of the actual size of this machine. So here's my hand for a reference. So it's a very very impressive piece of plastic. So moving on to the sprues. So we'll just take a look at this double sprue here. So this is a combination of A and R sprue. So I'm just going to take one of them away and have a look and see what we get. So this sprue mostly holds the various tire and hub details. And there's quite a few tires in this kit, as you could imagine. We also get some of our drivers, which are very basic. They're, they're, they're nice little painting, got, um, painting practice pieces. Um, I'm not using these, I have um, I have a different idea and scene in mind for my Dragon Wagon, so I'm going to be replacing these with figures from Hornet, or not Hornet, from Alpine. Again, we have some very nice rivet detail, as well as some nice bolt detail on the tyres. Facial detail on these figures is not the worst. Um, Tamiya can be a little bit weird with their they're sculpting of figures, and these aren't the worst in the world. Some of them look like aliens, and oh, in my mind, are a little bit underscaled. However, these are okay, and if you're just building it out of the box, and you just want a few guys to sit inside the armored cab, these will do just fine. Then we move on to the or sprue, which is adjoining this sprue, which we have more hub detail. Again, some nice rivet detail, and a very nice bolt detail. And then we have some parts for the axles, by the looks of it, as well as these look like um, brake drums. As you can see, the detail is pretty nice. Pretty sharp and nice and crisp. So we get two of these sprues, and these will make up the wheels for both the tractor and the tyre, I believe. Then we're moving on to hay sprue, and now we have most of the armoured covers for both the, for the cab as well as the rear plate for the cab itself. So again this is a very large piece of styrene. The detail is quite crisp, it's nice. Again we have these cooling marks but that's to be expected. We have some of the locating tabs for some of the details inside the armoured cab. We do have pin holes and pin marks that will have to be sand and filled especially if you model the armoured covers open. Again, this probably was pushing the technology at the time quite um, to its limit when they built this kit. So we, we might do a little bit of work here and there. However, you can just literally sand these down or fill them, it's totally up to you. So we probably will see a lot of pin marks on the inners of doors and hatches. A little bit unfortunate, but nothing that we uh, cannot fix as model makers. Again, we have more a tiny amount of armor detail these are the little 
um, locking bolts for the for the armored covers as well as some pin marks that will have to be removed then the front side which is the outward side of these armored covers were pretty cool I quite like these things very simple just like on the real vehicle some nice hinge detail however they should build up very nicely and once you sand away these pin marks you should uh, they should look just fine so moving on to C sprue we have all the transmission and axles actually see just a massive size of these axles they are absolutely monstrous and you'd, you'd imagine so for a vehicle as heavy as basically a 40 ton uh, load capacity vehicle very interesting and monstrous leaf spring so I think we might have two of this sprue by the looks of it so we'll have a look and see we have the steering arms for the tire or for the front axle which can be posed which is cool we have some Somewhat rough but nicely, or should I say, somewhat subtle cast texture on the, the axles. You could also add to that if you really wished. You're not going to see most of that. Then we have obviously the other leaf spring. And by God, it's a monster of a thing. Like it's huge. I've never seen a vehicle on this scale before, as in um, a machine as big as this. So the, just the size of the components are monstrously big. We have our final drive train. prop shaft as some people call it as well as um, a much larger coupling here another final drive I think that was called I'm not really a car person so a lot of these na proper names for these items are lost to me still very nice detail I'm not seeing any flashing nor heavy seam lines so so far so good so now we move on to beast brew and again this looks like um, tractor details so this looks like the uh, parts for the, sh uh, the chassis and once again the size of these parts are monstrous. There's nothing small or subtle about this machine. Again details are very crisp. No flashing which is very impressive for a kid of this age. Though what we'd expect from Tamiya. We have some nice molded anti-skid texture don't know how well the camera can pick that up which is very nice as well as our large exhaust stacks here and we also have a nice storage bin and get nice crisp details on that now we're going to move on to some of the larger sprues if you want to bring those out so we can actually get an idea how big this is so this is end sprue. This is mostly trailer details by the looks of it. So we have the rear ramps for the rear of the trailer, as well as the skid guards. Or sorry, these are the storage bins for the side of the of the trailer. And then we have these, which are the skid guards, and these were designed to, to prevent the trailer being damaged by a vehicle being pulled up onto it. Again, the detail is very very crisp. Some of it's kind of, you no, know, there's not much going on in some of it just because a lot of this would have been pressed steel. So there wouldn't have been the most intricate of engineering behind this, but it would have been very reliable, which was the main point for this vehicle. They needed something that could do the job without, a, without it be breaking down. It kind of defeats their purpose because who rescues the rescuer? Again, as you can see, monster sprue. Detail is very nice, very crisp few cooling marks here and there on the plastic but again nothing to worry about on the rear side we get quite a few pin marks but you're not going to see any of them we have a few pin marks on the back of the loading ramps but I think there's actually a plate that will sit on the back of these yeah you can see the locating pegs for them so if that's okay you're not going to see any of that so moving on to H and J sprue which they share together so we have some very nice detail on the tandem drive chains so this vehicle like i said it was designed for being reliable and practical so they went for a very simplistic final drive assembly just to keep it very easy to maintain in the field so we have these massive chains now there are replacements available for these however these actually look pretty nice 
It might be a bit overscaled, but I think they look just fine. Then we have the rear axle for the tractor, and by God, is a massive. And we do have a nice, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but there is a nice foundry mark there. And I think these are actually made by the uh, Pacific um, Locomotive Factory, if I remember correctly, or the Press Car Motor, that's it, the Press Car Mo uh, Locomotive Factory that built a lot of the Shermans too, ironically. So we have our 50 cal arm, um, ammunition boxes stowed away in, in their own little container. Nice little detail. Don't know how well you'll see that once the armor cab is together. And we have a lot of smaller fixtures for the cab. We have various different shackles, obviously the helmets for the crewmen, they look a bit weird. We have our fire extinguishers, we have our uh, searchlights, a few engineer tools, as well as the seating for the crewmen. And then on J Sprue, we have some other details. I think this is probably for the, the rear of either the trailer or the tractor. I don't really recognize a lot of these details, but you can get an idea that they are quite sharp and crisp. And once again, there is no imperfections on the plastic, no flashing, no warping. It's very, very impressive. And we also get a repeat of the same sprue, again, um, J and H sprues, identical again with our drive trains and what have you. Now we're on to D sprue. So this mostly has all the details for the tractor, including a chassis. And as you can see, it is massive. That's a very impressive piece of molding. Just one big piece. And we should have a little bit of transmission detail on the bottom, which we do. Not the sharpest in the world, but it doesn't need to be. It's more than adequate, because you're not going to see it. But still, it's nice that it's there. Also, these are probably the largest wheel welds I've ever seen in my life. We have some compressed gas bottles here, as well as um, the plate for this element here that sits, and that's where the engine assembly goes. We have a massive radiator. So we have a massive radiator, some nice non-slip texturing there. I don't know how well the camera picks that up, as well as a massive radiator fan. There is our instrument panel. Very simple, and just a simple paint job will work for that, because you're not going to see that. These are the firewalls for the engine. Again, very nice, crisp detail here. Also, a monstrously large steering wheel. And then we have this bizarre molding here which the gear sticks and various other throttles and then other little bits of detail here we have a massive final drive here for the tractor or um drive train or what the hell it's called so that's quite impressive piece of molding on this sprue and then we're moving on to uh, l and m sprue so this has some various miscellaneous parts on it so we have the the brush guards for the front lights and sirens and the front lights themselves we have a covered thompson submachine gun which is kind of cool i've never seen one in a canvas bag like that before i'm quite used to the ones you see on the willies cheeps and motorbikes so that's quite unusual we have a molded tarp for the the, the turret roof or the cab roof which i'm not going to put on because i think it looks horrible uh, it's a bit of an eyesore so i'm going to leave that off again it's totally optional up to you we have some reinforcing struts as well as a canteen and the decontamination um, kind of hand pumps, basically like a water sprayer. So if they got exposed to chemical weapons, they have a special mixture inside that and they can decontaminate the vehicle. I don't know how well that works, probably more for psychological reasons than anything else. We have the 50 cal tripod for the turret, or I keep calling it a turret, for the cab roof. So we use the tanks. As well as a 50 cal weapons ring. Free. Um, reminiscent of what you see on the M8 Scout car and the Juice and a Half, though I imagine this might be a little bit bigger. And then we have a whole host of other smaller parts for either the cab or the trailer. I say this is for the tractor. I have no clue what any of this is, but so far the detail has been very nice and no flashing again. A nice 
crisp detail anytime there is detail. Because there is a lot of blank plastic in this. Because I imagine a lot of it's actually for reinforcing the actual kit. So now we move on to Esprit. And we get a lot more details again. We have the coupler for the tractor. Again, nice detail there, some nice rivets and a pretty nice cast number there. Again, I don't know how well you guys can see it. We have various different hinges here and it looks like a big toe, a toe hook here or a tow bar. I don't know what the hell that is, it looks like one. Unless that's actually from the A-frame. And then we actually have the A-frame itself which was used for towing vehicles without the trailer. We have the cranes hooks which I would have liked that they were in two pieces because they're, they're model shots so that's kind of shit I would, I would have really liked if that was in two pieces because then you could like literally model it like hanging on to something you could like have like a bike or a tire in the middle of those or something like that but again that was just how things were done when this kit was built I'm sure you could scratch build it if you really wanted to which I am not we have some of the pulleys this is for the, the, the chain winch Again, details very nice. We have some oxygen and acetylene torch cutter cylinders. As well as a drawbar which sits on the front of the vehicle. It's a nice detail there. As well as some, these, I think these are the cylinders or the drums for the winch assemblies. Again, very simple details but very sharp nonetheless. Then we move on to the last sprue, and this is sprue G, and a lot of very fine details on this one. So we have some very small drive chains, whatever these are, these look very delicate. Okay, this is the uh, tandem pulley assembly, so this is actually the driving mechanism, so that's the motor. Here's the actual mount, that sits on the back of the tractor. A lot of delicate details on this one. We have the uh, control columns for this, or whatever the hell you call those, I can't think of the word. We have, I think this is the motor size, but there's actually some nice cast detail. I don't know if the camera wants to pick that up. So that's very impressive. Again, care is going to have to be a lot of care is going to have to be taken removing parts from this sprue. These are delicate. And with that sprue, that's all the plastic. And as you can see, I think there's like 13 sprues on this kit, so there's quite a bit of plastic. So there you have my inbox review of 135th Dragon Wagon. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. So this is one hell of a kit, arguably the largest model I had in the stash at the moment. And a great addition to go with all the dirty Shermans I've been buying, much to the dismay of all my German armor modeling brothers. They do not like it one bit. But don't worry, I had to give all their tigers something to shoot at. So I really hope you found this informative and gives you an idea what you get in this kit. I personally could not recommend this kit enough. It's absolutely just a little work of art, well, there's nothing little about it. And I'm looking very forward to building this. So in the next couple of months, that we're going to start working on this kit, and we'll be doing a full diorama build for this. I've something, it's a simple diorama, but it's going to be a very nice and a good story behind it. So stay tuned for this monster build. I think this is going to be the the major build for 2017, as well as another couple of Sherman builds on the way. I know, heresy. So anyway, lads, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe as always. I hope you all are having a great 2017 and please come back and join me for this cool model making adventure that I cannot wait to start. Thanks so much guys, happy modeling as always, be safe and watch out for those buses. I have been Shane, bye bye.